parar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Keith, and uh, I will be your comedian for the rest of the evening. Or uh, Comid Dion, if you mispronounce it. <laughs> I was actually saving that joke for later, I got a bit nervous. Uh, kind of a premature ejaculation. <laughs> So yeah, I'd just like to, before I go any further, I'd just like to say, um, you know, great turnout tonight. Really, honestly, really great turnout tonight. Really, really well attended. Uh, well attended is in, you know, it's well attended, but also that everyone here is attending it well. You know, nobody's uh, attending it lethargically or languescently, or no one's attending it indifferently. You know, it's very, very well attended, and I, you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> See, this is the first time I've ever actually done stand-up before, so, uh, yeah, you know, be kind. Uh, I'm not gonna try anything that I'm uncomfortable with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and my parents are gonna be home at 9.30, so they're gonna be just quick. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I am, uh, you know, I'm excited. It's my first ever gig, so, uh, you know, I will be debuting a lot of new material, a lot of that never before stuff. You should all find myself kind of lucky. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I am excited. Uh, I bought some new shoes to mark the occasion. <laughs> These aren't them. <laughs> they're, uh, brown, uh, leather Italian, uh, they're made, uh, a mono. A mono is, uh, Italian, it means, uh, by hand. It's actually kind of funny, because I had some pretty good loving last night. I'm not, uh... <laughs> But yeah, uh, to, I, I gave a name to this set. I'm calling it Talking Out the Trash. Um, I mean, not that I'll be trash talking, I can't trash talk at all, and I'm not gonna try. But um, yeah, it's Talking Out the Trash, is in most of the set will just be, you know, talking. It, it's mostly just redundant, it doesn't really mean anything. I'm not gonna really gonna get anywhere with anything. So I'm basically talking out the trash. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this will be kind of a, it's kind of cathartic for me, it's kind of a, you know, it will be kind of my 15 minutes of fame. My, uh, my hour of power. <laughs> oh. well, well, every dog has his day, you know? <laughs> you know, scientists used to think that the hour was the smallest unit of time. But then in a lab in the 50s, they split it, and they got the half hour. And they split it even more, and all these minutes and seconds came flying out. Uh, yeah, so this is my first ever gig. Yeah. As you can tell, I mean, I haven't even told a joke yet. Uh, would anyone like to hear a joke? Uh, why are there no antibiotics in the jungle? Because the pirates eat them all. Did I tell you I'm learning Hebrew? In Jew course. <laughs> but boy, that conjunctivitis.com. Boy, is that a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> so sorry, I can't really, I don't really know how to describe my sense of humor. I mean, I, I, I love self-deprecating humor. The trouble is, I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> you know, when I told my friends I was going to be doing stand-up comedy, some of them said, uh, Hey, Keith, isn't that a little bit, you know, narcissistic? You know, uh, standing up on a stage, you know, showing off, basically. And I just say, no, oh, Narcissus is the last Greek mythological figure I feel like I relate to. I mean, I feel like I identify a lot more with... Uh, Zeus. <laughs> yeah, I know, I mean, even when I think of what a comedian is, or what it is to be a comedian, in my, you know, a good comedian certainly, I think, has to have self-confidence, you know, has to have a certain level of definiteness, you know. They have to be observant, have to be able to retain information, you know, remember a set. Uh, or, and also have a certain level of elevation, I suppose, before an audience. I mean, like any performer. You know, like a musician or anything like that, you know, I think the set or the stage, you know, should be the space where the comedian, you know, they're always right, it doesn't matter what they say, it's in that moment in time, whatever they say is right at that moment, just like in a musical performance, you know, 
whatever they play at that point in time. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's supposed to. You don't have to make mistakes that's right at that moment. And also, a comedian should be kind of able to, you know, relate moments of epiphany they've had in their life, you know? Or, you know, be able to be able to say... Well, I don't know, basically, I don't think I'm able to do any of these kind of things, you know? God <laughs> forbid you all realize that I'm just as, you know, helpless and hollow and empty as all of you. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, let me reintroduce myself. I'm Keith Monaghan. Uh, I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> Uh, my favorite Rolling Stones album is Exile on Main Street. Yeah! <laughs> it's a good album. <laughs> um, I have a weird sexual fetish. I like to wear men's underwear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a student here at, at uh, Trinity College. I'm uh, very much in the autumn of my college life. I'm uh, coming to the end of third year. And uh, I'm studying English, so uh, I'm learning to read. <laughs> so, uh, I'm in this really weird place with English right now, where I don't really know kind of where I'm at. I feel really, really disillusioned with the course, uh, while at the same time feeling like I'm completely taking it for granted. I mean, what we do in English is we read the best books ever written, ever, by the greatest authors ever, ever, you know, who's ever wrote. And, uh, and oh, we, we, just sit, we just sit and talk about them. We have five hours a week. I mean, we basically do what most people wish they had the time to do in their lives. <laughs> Yet I still feel completely disillusioned with it. I mean, there's a couple of reasons why. You know, one is that it seems no matter how much or how little I study, I still seem to get like 55% on every single exam. If I study for three weeks, I'll get 55%. If I study the night before, I'll get 55%. So, uh, I don't know, I kind of lost faith in the college system like that. Uh, there was one test I did last summer. Uh, it was on a book called Things Fall Apart. Um, I think I read half of it the night before. Uh, the only thing I knew about the book going into that exam was that the main character's name was Oconquo. <laughs> and he was the strongest guy in the village. That's Honestly, that's all I knew about the book. And I, a few weeks later, I got the test back, 55%. So, uh, I mean, I knew nothing about that book. So it just shows that knowing nothing is good enough to pass a test in Trinity College. So I'm not disillusioned with it that way. Uh, yeah, but also, I think the main reason why I'm becoming this week the course is that I figured out that a book is only really as good as the acting in your head. <laughs> If the, if the acting in your head is bad, the book's gonna be shit. I was reading Robinson Crusoe. Just imagine Ben Stiller acting in that. <laughs> Such a bad book. Well, I think I made it bad with my imagination. Uh, it was just awful. Yeah, but I, I've been thinking a lot about the future lately. I mean, I am coming to the end of my you know, life in college, so I am gonna be a real person at some point. I think this kind of hit me when I was passing Trinity a couple of Saturdays ago, and I was you know, walking past the front gates, and I turned to come in, and then I had to stop and realize there's absolutely no reason for me to go in here right now. It's a Saturday, I have nothing on. And then I thought, geez, when I finish college, I'll never ever have a reason to come back into Trinity. And that kind of scared me, and I think, yeah, then I'll just have to just do something else in town, go somewhere else. Uh, instead of going to this little sanctuary that we have, where we can just hang around and you know, do nothing and talk about. Uh, yeah, but I mean, back to you know what to do with life. Uh, I mean, half of my course, yeah, some of which are here now. Ooh, uh, half of my course want to be writers. Half of my course want to be teachers, pretty much. Um, I can never teach, uh, ever. If I had a class, I would just wheel in a TV and show them my Van Halen DVD. <laughs> no, no, that's the only way I could teach. I would say, this is everything you should aspire to, kids. These guys play rock and roll music for a living. They do that for their whole lives. And they live in LA. <laughs> they go to the beach whenever they want. Oh. And they get loads of chicks. <laughs> Van Halen. They sell out Anaheim Stadium every time they play. <laughs> so, to aspire to that, kids, they're the smartest people in the world. <laughs> and intelligence, I mean, intelligence is nothing really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things. You know, 
it doesn't matter how smart you are, we're all going to die. <laughs> you will lose all of that intelligence that you had when you die, because after you die, you, your brain will switch off and disintegrate and become nothing. All you will be is a skull and some bones. So, uh, yeah, I, I could never really be a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, but then, that leads me to writing. Could I write? I've tried it. But uh, I don't think I can really do it professionally. I mean, ideally, in an ideal world, I would write one of those self-help books. You know, one of those ones that sells really well, you know, you can just write one of them and then be kind of rich for life. My, my self-help book would be called Successories. <laughs> Brackets, accessories to success. <laughs> And everyone would buy it, but the thing about accessories would be it would have been written from the point of view of me, someone who's never actually achieved success. Uh, but that would be the conduit of me getting successful from the sales of this book. Uh, it would be great, it would be a white cover, silver letters, a uh, picture of me eating a lobster steak. Accessories. <laughs> and then I'd get rich and move to LA and party. <laughs> So that's my life ambition right there. Yeah, thanks for listening to it. <laughs> so I was buying condoms the other day. Uh, no, uh, wait, I went to the counter. And, uh, you know, there's loads and loads of condoms. You can buy, oh, they're all different colors and stuff. Anyway, I, uh, I narrowed it down to, uh, to two choices. Pleasure Max. And regular. <laughs> Pleasure Max. Or regular. I went with the regular. I don't want to be Pleasure Maxing anyone. And also I thought Pleasure Max, that seems like a kind of beginner's choice for a condom. It's like, yeah, I'll let it do the work for me. <laughs> the level now where I'm good enough to, you know, challenge myself for the next stage of the condom. And I wonder what the, uh, like the tough kind of professional, you know, condom would be. Like, contacts and sound <laughs> uh, Yeah, so, uh, so a porn, huh? Uh, 69ing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine 96 in? <laughs> Having someone else's bare ass upside down pressed against the back of your head. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a pervert. People keep telling me to get a life, but I. Don't know where to download one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so no, I am a little bit pervert. I lost my last job because of it kind of, uh, I was caught masturbating in the storeroom. I'm really jacking off, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, after the hundredth time, I finally got caught and I was thrown out. I'll never be allowed back with that super value. <laughs> Clean up on aisle me. <laughs> and, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up now. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who showed up. I really appreciate it. And uh, honestly, I've never been happier to fart in front of so many people. <laughs> oh, it's great. But, uh, yeah, I think I'll hand it over to someone. <laughs>